Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to use Outlook Bookings with me. This feature allows you to create a booking page letting anyone schedule a meeting with you according to your availability. Thanks to Stellar for sponsoring this video. Stellar provides a useful tool in those scenarios where exchange migration is involved. The name of the tool is Stellar Converter for EDB, which converts offline or hosted EDB files to PST. The software can export single or multiple mailboxes and prioritize mailbox conversion without affecting server performance and support all version of Exchange. Ok, let's get started. Alright, here I am on my PC and I have Outlook for Web open. What I'm gonna do now is opening Booking with me. This is now fully integrated in Outlook. This means that if I open the calendar, I will find a new link here under Add Calendar called Edit Booking Page. The first time that you open your Outlook calendar, you will see a new option, new booking page. I have now added because I already created my booking page. I can click on this link or I can click on the drop down new event and then you can find bookable time. This will create your bookable time in booking with me using this pop up, this window that shows up directly in Outlook. So you can start to create your booking page right here, right now. But I'm going to click now on the button Edit Booking Page because you have a full booking experience with more options available. So now I'm going to click on Edit Booking Page. The main goal here is to give the chance to anyone to click on a link and book a meeting with me. It doesn't matter if it's my teammate or if it's a guest of my organization, maybe it's a partner or a vendor, it doesn't really matter, but this is a nice way to offer a page where people can book easily a meeting with me, according to my availability, of course. This is synchronized with the Outlook calendar. Now here, as we can see, I just created two new entries here. This is my Booking with Me page. This is the URL that you can directly access if you want. Now, I have here Office hours already created. Let's delete this one and let's start from scratch. So let me click on the button plus and now here I can provide a title to this meeting type. All right, I have office hours. Let me add also an emoji by tapping Windows key period. And now I can, for example, type building. Let me see if I have one nice building office building this is nice all right to make it more fancy this this title i added this emoji now if i want i can provide a category for this meeting so every time that the user book a meeting with me automatically the label will be assigned to this kind of meeting and this in my calendar will be at glance immediately visible that the meeting comes through booking with me now let's say team meeting as category, it's fine. Here I can add a description if I want or not. Let's keep it blank for the moment. Here I can set if this is a Teams meeting or not. Then I have to set another important option, which is the duration of the meeting every 30 minutes, for example, on my calendar, or you can adjust this accordingly, according to your, uh, to your availability and engagement. Now, below there is public and this means that you will just share a link in uh, your email signature, for example, or in another website where people can directly click on this link and then see your page. Or you can make it private. It means that only people with the booking link that you are going to share will be able to get access to your page. Let's set public. And now, if I set use my regular meeting hours, this will take my office hours defined in Outlook. But I want to make some customization here. I want to say that this, it's a custom, a 
availability hours, then I can even define a range. For example, in the next three months, I want to provide this availability. Let's say none and none, so this will uh, take indefinite time. And now I can configure and set every day. I have not bookable for Sunday and Saturday. It, it's perfect. I don't want to really work in the weekend. So then let's set properly Monday, for example, 8 a.m. Let's do the first one, then I'm going to do the next, the next one, let's say 8, 11 a.m. And if I want now in the same day on Monday, I can define a different range, which could be potentially, let's say, 3 p.m., 5 p.m., it's fine. Let's do the other next days. All right, I defined my availability for every day of the week. Down below there is this button, Advanced Options, and here what I have is a preview of my calendar, how it looks like, book a time on my Outlook calendar, and then I have a buffer time before the meeting or a buffer time after the meeting, lithium start, start time too, minimum lead time, maximum lead time. So it's up to you how to configure all this kind of thing. Let's keep it as is. It looks nice. It is a Teams meeting, as I said, and now I can click on the button Save. Now that my office hours booking with me is created, I can eventually copy this link or make it as a private. I can create a duplicate of this one or I can share this with my colleague. I can click directly here or I can copy the entire page if I want. Now let's copy this office hours booking with me element that I created here. So what I can do to make this thing more uh, nice and fancy is go on my email. All right, let's go now in the settings, view all Outlook settings. And now in compose and reply, what I can do here is use something like that. So set my signature, book a meeting with me and here the URL if you want to add something custom or there is a checkbox down below, include a link to my bookings page in my signature. And I'm going to use the out of the box functionality. It's perfectly fine and it looks very good, this link. Now, if I click on save, I can set that for new message. I want to use my signature and even for replies. Let me click on save, close, and let's do a test. So let me target here a dead events. Let me type something here, booking with me. And let's send this empty email to Adele Events. Luckily, I have already a browser instance open impersonating Adele Events. Now, I can open the email that will come in just some seconds. Here we go, the email. And now I have here this link, book time to meet with me. So if I click now on this link, I have on top on the right the ability to create my booking page, but I don't want to do it right now. And very cool, now I am on the booking page of Giuliano. So I have here the availability for office hours. And now as a Dele, I can book a meeting. So for example, let's say this one, 15 February, or I can even change. It's pretty cool because this keep in consideration my Outlook calendar. So in, uh, in Thursday, for example, I have for Tuesday, I have other meetings, 16 February. I can double check this, opening again Outlook and going on calendar. So on Thursday, it seems that I'm available only in the afternoon. Then again, as a Delevance here and exploring the availability, I can book a meeting with Giuliano at this time, seven o'clock. I have this drop down, which is very useful, useful if I'm working in a different time zone. So for example, if I'm based in Alaska, I can set Alaska. And now here the, the time change accordingly. But let's go on my real time zone. 
speaking as Adele from an Adele perspective. And here I have even this filter to display available time or within meetings hours. Now if I click on next, I have already filled out this. Um, these are pre-filled fields, name and email, because Adele Vance is already logged in Microsoft 365. So Microsoft takes automatically this information and here I can add my notes. Please, let's discuss urgently about the Project X. I can click on the button Book. And now Booking is creating on the Outlook calendar this meeting. Now, let me close this thing and let me open Outlook. So if I jump on now on my email, I can see that Adele Vance has booked, booked a meeting with me and this is the date, this is just a recap. Here I can join directly the meeting. And now let's see the calendar. Let me open this day, February 16, 4 p.m. Let me go on my calendar. Let me target next week. And now I can see here my slot booked on my calendar. I have the meeting with Adele Vance. Now let's see from a different perspective. So let's say that I am an anonymous user or I am an external user or a guest, for example. I am totally outside of Microsoft 365. Let's see how this experience will look like. If I copy this link, I have here another browser instance open. I have this in private session open. I can paste this link in the browser and this opens the Giuliano booking with me page. Now, I can sign in with one of my Microsoft 365 work or school account that I have, or I can click on continue as guest. Now, I can book a meeting with Giuliano. Let's say 14 and 2.30 p.m. I can click on next. Now, Considering that I am not logged in Microsoft 365, I have to provide my name, email, and notes. Last thing to call out here is that you have to accept the meeting. So I am, again, at the events, I am in the Outlook calendar, and this is automatically set as tentative. So then this means that you have to confirm your availability to participate to the meeting. So you can click on yes, maybe or not. Or if you want, you can reschedule this meeting. There is a link dropped in this event calendar that allows you to cancel the meeting, create a new meeting or reschedule this meeting for any kind of reason. All right, it's time to talk a little bit more about Stellar. This is the website of Stellar. Now I'm going to jump on for business email converter EDB to PST. This is the tool that I want to highlight. We have here the three main features that we can read. EDB to PST converter migrates large EDB files to PST, no file size limitation, export offline EDB files and public folders to Live Exchange or Office 365, also known as Microsoft 365 supports parallel processing of mailboxes for faster conversion. You can download this software for free. There is a trial period. You can give it a try and then you can explore all capabilities. This tool works in those scenarios where, for example, PowerShell fails or is not possible to access to an old EDB file. Or the third option is we can export public folder. It works great also in this case. If I scroll below, we have a summary of all main features of this tool. And we have a lot of features, as you can see. Then scrolling down, we have finally the user interface. I'll show you in a bit. The last thing that I want to highlight in this page is the price model. We have three different options. You can select and pick up the one that works better for you. But don't forget that there is the trial period so you can test the tool, you can try it, and then you can make your decision. Now I have here another tab open. 
I want to highlight the first screenshot. This is the first time, the first page that it opens when you run the app. You have two options. You can select hosted exchange and this will convert mailboxes that are hosted on the exchange server. The second option is if you have the EDB file locally on your machine. Now let me switch in another screenshot. Here we have an overview how it works. It's very easy, the user interface, it's intuitive. You have on the left the ability to see all users with all artifacts, calendar, contacts, deleted items, draft for Marco, for example. And then you can decide what to do with all these artifacts. In the last screenshot, we can see that the process is completed and all mailboxes are migrated. All right, we have seen how to use bookings in Outlook. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to subscribe, like and comment. I hope to see you next time. Bye.